Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Fiddle of Eagles Now. Today, I requested it. You guys provided a ton of mailbag questions here. So we're going to jump into as many as we can in the next 10 or 12 minutes and answer as many questions as, like I said, we can. We got a bunch. So we'll start with Ramiro Martinez, who says, How confident you are, are you, I guess, on Howie Roseman in the draft? Do you think the Eagles will trade up in the draft? So I do feel confident about Howie Roseman. Again, we have no choice but to be confident in Howie Roseman because he's the only GM we have right now, and they're not firing him anytime soon. In terms of the trades up in the draft, they won't trade up from 12, in my opinion. I don't see a scenario where a team would want to move back from Denver at 9 to go back to 12, or, I mean, Dallas is not going to trade with them at number 10, and I don't think Carolina's looking to trade back. They want to stay put, probably get a pass rusher, or, sorry, get a receiver or an offensive lineman. So trading into the top 10, not going to happen. But trading up in the second or third round of the draft will happen. Like, the Eagles will make draft trades. The Eagles will go, hopefully, into the second round. I'm really hoping Philadelphia makes a trade up into the second round. That way they have two second-round draft picks. And they can do that because they have 11 draft picks this year. I mean, they have an absolute ton of firepower, especially from the later rounds, which you can package up and move up. I expect Philadelphia to make some trades here. But I don't want people to start thinking, oh, well... What if we traded back into the top 10 in order to get Devontae Smith? No, Philadelphia's made it very clear they wanted to get out of the top 10, at least in part to go ahead and get additional draft picks next year. And so going back from 6 to 12 kind of has, uh, to me, put the nail in the coffin of moving back into the top 10. But I would expect and, uh, and, and be very, very interested and excited for Philadelphia to move back into some of the other rounds and pick up some additional early round draft picks, especially if some of the better players, the Terrace Marshalls of the world, some of the other wide receivers, maybe Asante Samuel Jr., <coughs> excuse me, in the second round are all there. They can go up and get them. I am all for making some trades, so I think they will trade up in this year's draft. What do you guys think? Over-under in terms of Eagle draft day trades, let's put it at 1.5 as the over-under. How many trades will the Eagles make in this year's draft? Pin comment down below. I think it'll be over 1.5. I think we're at least at 2, maybe 3 trades. Philadelphia's been active in the past. Give me your uh, thought on the over-under for the trades right now down below in the comment section. Let's move over here from South uh, uh, to South Philly Spud's question. He says, can you picture a scenario where Waddle falls to 12, Eagles draft him, and then we still take Marshall or Bateman with the second or, uh, with, with the second pick? Yes, uh, I do see that happening. And honestly, I'd be fine with taking two wide receivers with the first two draft picks. I think you've got to figure out the wide receiver position. As far as Waddle falling to 12, I think he will be there at number 12. I don't see a scenario where Waddle is not there at 12, I guess unless Carolina at 8 wants to go ahead and take him. But I think Carolina would take Kyle Pitts if he's there and uh, over Jalen Waddle. And it obviously take Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith if they're both there. And with the quarterbacks going early, I could see those guys falling a little bit as well. I think Waddle will be there at number 12. And if he is, he is my pick at number 12 because you don't need Micah Parsons anymore or you don't necessarily have to have Micah Parsons based on the Eric Wilson signing. And you can make the argument that J.C. Horn, the corner, or Patrick Sertan is a need. And I think that's true. But you can also get a good cornerback in the second round. The good news for Philadelphia is that you can get a wide receiver in the first round and a corner in the second round, or a corner in the first round, a wide receiver in the second round, and both, to me, would be very, very good options. But yeah, I, I could totally see them going with uh, Waddle and then, let's say, Marshall in the second round and get two wide receivers, and that would please, in my opinion, a lot of Eagle fans. My top five wide receivers, again, you've seen this ranking before. I'll show it one more time. I'm a Chase guy before Devontae Smith. I think Waddle is clearly number three. I think Bateman is four. I think he's going to be a first-round wide receiver in the later parts, probably the late 20s. And then Marshall, to me, should be the first wide receiver off the board in the second round and hopefully Philadelphia at 37 will be in a, uh, a place where they can go ahead and grab him and honestly I think they probably will be. Who would you guys rather have? Would you guys rather get Jalen Waddle at number 12 or wait and get Rashad Bateman a little bit later on? Maybe a trade back into the first round. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Type uh, W for Waddle or B down below for Bateman. Either one to me would honestly be absolutely fine. I think Waddle's a better prospect overall, but Bateman, if they could grab him somehow. If he were to somehow fall into the second round, man, I am absolutely all for Cam, uh, uh, Philadelphia getting him. Before we go and go into Lane Landon's question here, make sure you guys are subscribed to get in on our mailbags as all these questions were pulled from our subscribers and our subscribers get the first shot at the mailbag question. So if you want to be a part of a mailbag, you never had your question answered on a mailbag, the best thing to start with is to go ahead and subscribe down below as we approach 20,000 subscribers here on the channel. I remember when it was like two subscribers and we we're starting to grow and grow and grow. And so make sure you guys are subscribed here to go ahead and jump in on future mailbags. All right, Landon says, I think Eric Wilson and whoever they draft at linebacker will be enough to make our linebacking core better. Also, having Jordan Howard back, do you think he's good enough to be our power back? Um, I think yes is the answer, but you want a little more detail. I, I think you start with saying that I absolutely love Eric Wilson. Like, Eric Wilson, to me, is an absolutely fantastic signing. I love him just as much as the Anthony Harris signing. Those, to me, were two really good, impactful, cheap free agent signings that will have a very good, to me, 
uh, uh, impact on Philadelphia's defensive perspective. Now, the linebacking core to me is still a little bit weak. You got to hope that TJ Edwards and Alex Singleton turn out to be good. You hope Sean Bradley, the second year guy out of Temple, can provide something as he did very little last year for Philadelphia. I think they will draft a linebacker at some point in this year's draft, but I just don't see Parsons being the pick now at 12 because Wilson can be and should be the starter at middle linebacker. So I feel pretty good about the linebacking core. I don't feel as good as I would if they would have gotten Micah Parsons because his ceiling's a lot higher than Eric Wilson's, but I feel a lot better getting Eric Wilson than what it was before that because the Eagles linebacking core has always been probably the weakest point of this entire football team. So I can see them drafting somebody else and I think it will be good enough because the front four with Philadelphia is always so good. But uh, I do love the Wilson addition. I think that was fantastic. As far as Jordan Howard goes, he should be the power back and I think he will be the power back because they have no one else that they may be, be the power back right now. I could still see them looking at a running back in this year's draft later on. I like Chuba Hubbard in the later rounds at Oklahoma State. Somebody who you don't spend a high draft pick on, but still could rotate in there along with Miles Sanders and Boston Scott. So yes, I, 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 I like both the moves, honestly, and I feel confident about both position groups as they currently stand. Okay, before we go ahead and keep going, jump in with our partners at Newsbreak and help us get the Newsbreak app uh, to continue to grow as it is absolutely fantastic. Download it on your iPhone today where you can get breaking news at the touch of a button from wherever you're living. Just won't put in your zip code code and it'll give you custom news feeds in terms of whatever you want whether you're in Philadelphia nearby Delaware County Chester County Cherry Hill Bucks County wherever you are maybe not even in Pennsylvania you're an Eagle fan on the west coast doesn't matter you get local news and weather you can pick political commentary and if you're of course into that or you just go and do sports and you can follow a bunch of different specific sports sites especially in Philadelphia like the Philly Inquirer NJ.com 6ABC NBC 10 and a whole lot more all in one very convenient news feed you can also um or to me, as you say, the best way to download the app is to go ahead and use our link, chatsports.com forward slash Eagles NB. You'll see that at the bottom of the screen right now. You download the app for both your Android and iPhone device. And once you download it, you can always follow our page here, Philadelphia, or sorry, Eagles Now by Chat Sports. You just search that on the Newsbreak app, and all of my videos and updates will go ahead and be posted there as well. We already have like 101 followers, which is really good, but we're trying to get to 200 as soon as possible. So go ahead and download the Newsbreak app for the latest uh, breaking news in terms of local and national stuff in your area, whether you're Philly or somewhere else, and always, of course, uh, use our link, chessports.com forward slash Eagles NB. Okay, Christy Smith says, do you want to sign Hurts to a huge contract like we did with Wentz? Would you rather draft another quarterback in the upcoming years? Um, let's wait and see about Hurts. Now, I like Jalen Hurts. You guys know I've been a proponent of Jalen Hurts ever since they let go of Carson Wentz because we have no choice. And honestly, I thought he did pretty good, even though he only won one game out of the four he started about the uh, latter half of the year there. But I'm not giving him a contract at all. I don't care. If Jalen Hurts balls out this year, I'm still not giving him a big contract. I think one of the flaws with Carson Wentz, even though it made sense at the time, was paying him a lot of money. Now, again, at the time, made sense because he was coming off of a great year, and you're like, okay, yeah, for sure, sign him because he's going to be a great quarterback. I still think he is, but I think you could have waited an extra year and then for known for sure what you wanted to pay Carson Wentz. So I'm all for paying, paying Jalen Hurts if he's going to be the quarterback of the future, but let's not go ahead and get crazy here about signing him at all. But I also wouldn't go draft somebody. That, let me, let me re, re, rephrase that. I would also not go draft somebody of note in the NFL draft. I'd be totally fine with taking like a uh, um, the quarterback out of Wake Forest, Jamie Newman, like I did in my mock draft here on the channel a couple of days ago. He's a fifth or sixth round guy. He'll be a backup for a long time. There's no drama there. I would not take anybody in the first three rounds. No Kellen Mond, no Kyle Trask. I would avoid those guys here, and at least in this draft and in future drafts, as long as Hurts is still playing well, I would still avoid drafting somebody to create the same quarterback controversy that was there when they drafted Jalen Hurts too high. And I know it worked out in the end, but you can't keep spending high draft picks on quarterbacks and then expect the starting quarterback to not be upset about it. So don't sign him yet. Have a little patience, and I would not draft or draft a quarterback anytime soon unless we know for sure Hurts is trash, and we'll know after this year. Like, if he's good, he's good. If he's bad, he's bad. It'll be pretty obvious for all of our eyes to go ahead and see. You guys trust Jalen Hurts as a starter? Like, because, I mean, I've, I I have as much trust in him as you could possibly probably have right now. I, I think he can, he can be the next Russell Wilson. I feel very good about his chances of being the starting quarterback uh, of a good Eagles football team, not just the starting quarterback of a bad Eagles football team. So I would say I have a lot of confidence, and I trust him. Uh, type Y if you agree with me. If you don't, and I guess you're all doom and gloom for the rest of the year, which would stink, but maybe people are there, type N down below for no. Um, big Play Slay, my guy, always has good questions. What do you think? Who do you think has the potential to fall that's primary projected to be in the top 10? 
and who is a specific player who can be in addition to this team, whether it be defense or offense. So in terms of falling, I think Devontae Smith could fall. I mean, I'm, now that you look at where the draft sits with so obviously San Francisco there at number three and with Carolina sitting at eight and the Falcons at four, I think Jamar, I think Devontae Smith could fall because I think you're going to get four quarterbacks, the first four picks, and then somebody's going to trade up to go ahead and get the fifth quarterback, whether Mac Jones falls or Trey Lance falls. Someone will come into the top 10 and trade him so, or trade up for him. So that's five picks out of the 10 that are going to be quarterbacks. That's five picks that aren't Devontae Smith. Then you factor in Panay Sewell will be a top 10 draft pick. Okay, that's six. Jamar Chase will be a top 10 draft pick. That's seven. Then you have Kyle Pitts. That's eight. So that leaves two uh, two final draft pick slots that don't that uh, could be someone besides Devontae Smith and therefore let him fall a little bit. And so I think he's going to fall maybe out of the top 10, but I think more so to the 8 or 9 range. So I don't know if he's going to be there at 12. I don't think we hold our breath and hope that he's going to be there at 12. But I just wouldn't be shocked if Devontae Smith goes ahead and, uh, and, and, and falls back to 12 because I think he is... Great, but he's been overshadowed by Kyle Pitts, and he's been overshadowed a lot by Jamar Chase. I think it's going to hurt his draft, plus five quarterbacks uh, up there inside the top ten. Specific player, I mean, again, there are a lot of them. I've talked a lot about specific specific players that you go ahead and get. Asante Samuel Jr., Terrace Marshall, Rayshad Bateman. You can get one of the, yeah, the pass rushers. There's a lot of options. So uh, my dream pick right now would be Waddle if he's going to be there because I don't think Smith's going to be all the way at 12, even though I think he will fall. But i also be fine with J.C. Horner, Patrick Sertan. So those are kind of my three guys that I'm really keeping an eye on right now, at least at number 12, and then there are plenty more options later on in the draft. What's your dream selection? It's a great question. Your dream selection at number 12 overall. Like, if, if everything fell out perfectly, I guess maybe it should be Devontae Smith. I just don't think he's going to be there. Give me your realistic dream pick at number 12 overall. I want to read through those comments and see if there are any really, really good ones. Hopefully no one says Kyle Pitts, but I'm sure somebody will. Um, okay, yeah, let's do one more here. I'll give you a little bonus one. Nate Jordan says, if the Eagles package Ertz and a few other late-round picks in a trade, how high of a draft pick could they expect to get in return? Wow. Okay, that's an interesting question. So I think that is a real possibility they do package Ertz with additional picks during draft day to move up at some point, whether it's day one or day two or day three. I think you could package Ertz and get another second. I think you could take Zach Ertz, take a third-round draft pick and a sixth-round draft pick, and get somebody's late second-round draft pick. And I think that, honestly, would be a pretty darn good return for a tight end that we have been rumored to only get like a third or a fourth round draft pick for. So I could definitely see them packaging Ertz and moving back into the second. I talked about it earlier. I'd love two second round draft picks this year in order to maximize the talent that's out there and get potentially three, including the first round draft pick, really good impact starters right away. So I think you could package Ertz and get another, another second with enough trade bait. And I honestly would be fine with doing that, even though we all kind of hope Ertz stays. I think we all understand that Ertz is probably going to be traded as we get closer to uh, the NFL draft. There you go. Ultimately, we have for today here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. Of course, use the hashtag Eagles in the comments for our next mailbag video sometime next week. We always give you guys a nice little heads up. That way you can think about a question and then type your question, and then I'll pull the question, hopefully. I know some people's questions don't get answered, but just the nature of the beast, and so hopefully we'll get you guys on the next video. Ultimately, we have for today here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.